given the conic section using this polar equation, we want to find the x and y intercepts and the foci. We'll begin by determining what type of conic section we have. To do this, we'll write the given polar equation in this form here, since our equation contains cosine theta. Once the equation is in this form, where we have a one here in the denominator, the equation represents a conic section where E is greater than zero and is the eccentricity with the focus at the pole. So once we have the equation in this form, we can determine the eccentricity, which will tell us which type of conic we have, and we also know we have a focus at the pole. Since we want this four to be positive one, we'll divide the numerator and denominator by four, which would give us r equals four divided by four is one, divided by, again, four divided by four is one, minus two cosine theta divided by four would be one half cosine theta. So this tells us that the eccentricity, E, is equal to one half, and therefore the graph is an ellipse, and also because our equation contains cosine theta, we'll have a horizontal major axis. If the equation contained sine theta, we'd have a vertical major axis. And again, because our equation fits this form, we have one focus at the pole, which would be this point here, which we'll label F sub one, since there will be another focus. Let's go ahead and write down that one focus has coordinates zero comma zero. Now to find the x and y intercepts, we'll complete a table of values. We'll let theta equal zero radians and pi radians to find the x-intercepts, since zero radians terminates along the positive x-axis and pi radians terminates along the negative x-axis. And then we'll let theta equal pi over two radians and three pi over two radians to find the y-intercepts, because pi over two radians terminates along the positive y-axis, and three pi over two radians terminates along the negative y-axis. To perform these substitutions, though, to avoid this one-half in the denominator, we'll use the original form of the polar equation. Notice that when theta is zero radians, cosine zero is equal to one, so we have r equals four, divided by the quantity four minus two times one, this would be four divided by two, or two. So when theta is zero radians, r is two, which should be this point here, with coordinates two comma zero, which is one of the x-intercepts. Next, when theta is pi radians, cosine pi is equal to negative one, so we'd have r equals four, divided by the quantity four minus two times negative one, this would be four six or two thirds. So when theta is pi radians, r is two thirds, which would be this point here, again another x-intercept, with coordinates negative two thirds comma zero. And now we'll find the y-intercepts. When theta is pi over two, cosine pi over two is zero, so we'd have four divided by the quantity four minus two times zero, which would just be four divided by four, one. Also notice that cosine three pi over two radians is also zero, so r would also be one when theta is three pi over two. So when theta is pi over two radians, r is positive one, this point here, which is a y-intercept, the point zero, one. And when theta is three pi over two radians, that terminates here, R is also positive one, so we'd be at this point here. So using Cartesian coordinates, we'd have zero, negative one. Now we still have to find the other coordinates of the other focus. We only have one right now at the pole. To help us do this, we need to recognize that this is the major axis. And the midpoint of the major axis would be the center of the ellipse. So we'll first find the center of the ellipse, and then we'll find the other focus. If we take a look at some notes just for a moment, notice how if we find the center of the ellipse, the two foci are C units from the center. And we already have one focus on the left, so once we find the center, we can find C, and then we can find the other focus on the right of the center after we find C. 
But before we find C, we do have to find the center of the ellipse. So the center of the ellipse, again, would be the midpoint of the two x-intercepts because these are the two endpoints of the major axis. And notice how the y-coordinate would still be zero. To find the x-coordinate, we'd have to find the average of two and negative two-thirds. So we'd add these and divide by two, or add them and multiply by one-half. So one-half times two, or two over one, plus negative two-thirds would be the x-coordinate of the center. Common denominator here would be three. So this ends up being one-half times six-thirds plus negative two-thirds, that'd be four-thirds. So this equals four-sixths or two-thirds. So the center has coordinates two-thirds comma zero, which would be this point here. Well, notice how the distance from the center with coordinates two-thirds comma zero and the focus that we already have at the origin the distance between these two points, because they're both on the x-axis, would be two-thirds, and therefore c is equal to two-thirds, again, the distance from the center to the focus. Which means if we take the center and add c to the x-coordinate, we can find the other focus. The second focus would have an x-coordinate of two-thirds, the x-coordinate of the center, plus c, which is two-thirds, comma, zero. So the second focus has coordinates four-thirds comma zero. Which would be this point here. Which is C units to the right of the center. While the other focus is C units to the left of the center which means our ellipse would look something like this. Based upon our polar equation. I hope you found this helpful.